I'm Barbara Meager, and I'm here to talk to you about the chain stitch. The chain stitch is one of the very basic embroidery stitches, and it turns out there are over 50 variations of the chain stitch. The common element is that a loop must be formed before the stitch is made. Now we're going to only concern ourselves here with the basic chain stitch, but it can also look very different depending upon the thread that you have chosen to use and how many strands that you use. If you look at this sample, you see that here we have embroidery cotton with one strand, two strands, three strands. Now we have pearl cotton in both size eight and size five. The floche, the single strand of floche, looks very much like the two strands of embroidery floss up above. This is cotton embroider. And here we have metallics, which are another choice, and these are three different weights of metallic thread. Now, as you can see from these samples, chain stitch is normally used as an embroidery stitch, but it not, hasn't always been that way. In some instances, it's also used as a filling stitch. In earlier times when thread was very expensive, embroiderers realized that they could make a basic design using the chain stitch as a filling stitch because the chain stitch put a lot of thread on the surface of the fabric, leaving less thread on the back, so the expensive thread was showing on the front. This little sample was stitched using over-dyed embroidery floss. The needle that you are going to be using for the chain stitch depends upon the thread that you are using. The eye of the needle must be large enough for the thread to pass through without abrading or without fraying. And it also has to create a hole in the fabric large enough for that needle to pass through. Uh, embroidery or cruel needles work well, as do chenille needles if you have a heavier yarn. To make it easier for us, I have chosen to use a single strand of number five pearl cotton, which means I'm using a number 22 chenille needle with its fat shank for the stitching. Because even stitching is very important with the chain stitch, our sample is going to be worked with the design in a hoop. To begin stitching, we have to anchor the thread. If we simply bring the needle up to the surface of the fabric, that knot could come loose. Or, even worse, that knot would form a lump on the fabric. So what we need to do is to anchor the thread invisibly. If we had other stitches on the back of our, our surface that we could anchor into, that would be fine, but here we don't have anything. So we're going to use what is called an away waist knot. This means what we will do is put the needle into the fabric a good two needle lengths away from our design line from the beginning, and so that we'll be out of the way from our stitching. We bring the needle up at the beginning of our stitching line. And remember, this is a chain stitch. We first have to form that loop. So we create the loop. You see how I'm forming the loop with my thumb. Put the needle back into the fabric at the same point where it came out. And then bring our needle up, taking care that the loop is under our needle and draw it through. Now, the direction that you choose to stitch is really what is ever comfortable for you. Most stitchers, if you're right-handed, you stitch from right to left. If you're left-handed, you stip in the, stitch in the opposite direction. But for chain stitch, it actually works quite well. If you hold it vertically, stitching from top to bottom, that way you can easily follow the design line. So for the next stitch, you insert the needle back into the fabric where it originally came out and bring the needle back to the surface. Do you see how I've formed the thread into the loop with my thumb? The fingers of my supporting hand are helping guide the needle back out of the fabric. And you continue in this fashion. You see, you form that loop before you bring the needle back out of the fabric. 
as you stitch it's important that you shift the direction that you're holding the fabric you see how I'm moving it so that the design line is always directly in front of me now when you get to the end of your design line take the last stitch and make a very tiny stitch to anchor that loop down then turn the work over and simply run it back through several stitches cut your thread off to anchor at this point you can go back snip off your knot put it into the needle and anchor that thread into these stitches now should you run out of thread while you're in the middle of your stitching line you don't want to end it the way you would end it at the end of the line because that little stitch that you take right here is going to show there's a trick and that trick is to use two needles so you take the second needle there's no need to knot it you're going to take the the new thread and you're going to run it under just a few stitches on the back to anchor it okay temporarily leave your thread to the back of the fabric now to take the next stitch pretend you were going to take a complete stitch but this time don't bring the needle out of the fabric put the needle to the back take that new thread that's underneath and bring it up where this needle would have come out then you can take the old thread to the back and you see how that knot is formed park this thread somewhere out of your way and then when you've completed your line or when you need another needle you can go back and finish it off and you continue stitching as far as you need to go I hope you enjoy the chain stitch I think you'll find that it's repetitive motion is, is a very soothing motion for you and I would urge you to look at some of the vari many varieties of chain stitch and I want to thank you for uh, joining us here at the Smocking Arts of America and checking out the chain stitch.